You won't see it driving by, although there are some pretty big hints. And even though you are literally right on top of it. It is just one of those hidden places in the city that people don't know is here. And once they come and see it, they say, wow, I can't believe I missed it. Ted Tai, co-founder and managing partner of National Development, led the effort in 2015 to build the aptly named Inkblock residences on the former Boston Herald newspaper site. But the question remained what to do with the wall of highway that separated the burgeoning south of Harrison community with adjoining South Boston. It was fenced off, it was dark, it was dreary. There were some illegal activities happening down here and the neighborhood didn't like it. And that started this process of reimagining what could happen here. For its part, National Development offered to lease the eight unused acres from the state. Then the creativity and imagination really came into play. The mural project began in 2017 and has showcased the work of both local and national artists like Percy Fortini Wright, a fisherman and graffiti artist who calls his piece Holy Mackerel and who marvels at the transformation here. It's actually a, a historical graffiti spot back in the day, but it was kind of an abandoned space, not much love taken to it. Ironically, it was kind of with love that Fortini Wright's own work got tagged here. Being a graffiti artist myself, I have a lot of respect and I feel like they do too as well. It's just on the train. Yep. Just like it would be on the train. Yep, shout out to Erab. This stuff's good. <laughs> We've admired the work of artist Silvia Lopez Chavez before. This particular location is very utilitarian, right? It's like right underneath a highway, but yet it has been transformed with all this art. The art is programmed and changes, and in warmer months, events are programmed also from fitness and yoga classes to concerts and festivals, all under a busy highway and all adding proof to the appeal of creative urban parks and outdoor art. It has that ability, especially because it's outdoors, to be able to reach everyone. That's the beauty of public art and street art in general. So that is very powerful. It is for sure one of the more peculiar riddles of the pandemic. But suddenly sea shanties are all the rage, especially online where presumably there are very few anchors being weighed or sails being raised. Of course, there may be a drunken sailor or two out there. They still raise the sails on the three-masted square rigged friendship at Derby Wharf in Salem, Mass. And on this day, there were even some sea shanties on board, thanks to our inviting the Portermen of Newburyport to join us. Long we tossed on the roaring main, now we're safe ashore, Jack. Nine guys whose love for this music predates the pandemic. We were curious to get their take on the current sea shanty craze um, there's thousands now just started as well ah you know we think it's tremendous did you ever expect to see the words TikTok and sea shanty oh, combined no not at all <laughs> that, that's a total crazy aberration it sort of blew a lot of the old fogies minds and it forced some of us to go on TikTok and find out what it was all about <laughs> all on the ball and now maybe some on TikTok are also finding out what sea shanties are all about Sea shanties grew out of a whole bunch of different cultures and different groups of people who worked on the ships, and eventually their culture got incorporated into the shanties. Friendship's captain, Jeremy Bumagin, makes the key point that most shanties were work songs, all about getting a crew to get a task done as an effective team. So right now, you're leaning on the captain. You put these bars in that, you'd walk around in a circle, bringing the anchor up off the bottom. Hence, a captain shanty. As for what makes for the enduring appeal of shanties for landlubbers, and especially now? You sing these songs with your friends, and especially in TikTok, it's quite e relatively easy to stitch yourself in with somebody else. One day when the tongue is done, we'll take our leave and go. All you have to do is get a line out there. All on the pole and all kitty is me darling. The whole group will come in behind you. Next thing you're flying, you're floating. 
Thanks to the National Park Service, you can see the friendship of Salem when it's in port and its birth at Salem's Derby Wharf. You can also hear more of the Porter Men. They released their debut album back in December. They hope to perform outdoors and in person over the summer. We'll have links to more information about the friendship and the Porter Men on our website. Up next, how to describe these holy icons.